Hello and welcome to another video. Um, just this is a channel update and responding to comments. As you might have heard in, a, in my last video, it's been difficult over the summer with the situation with the pandemic to get any videos done. And now we're back to normal life, life routines, still with the virus though. It's still quite difficult to get videos done. And this is my second attempt at this video. I responded to all the comments on a previous video I shot about a week ago, but unfortunately the camera didn't pick up any audio. So I had well over an hour of footage which had to go in the bin. So uh, thank you for your patience. I'll get the videos out as often as I can do them. So looking ahead, we're at 295 subscribers. So thanks for staying subscribed and thanks for our new subscribers as well. I'd like to get the channel up to a thousand subscribers because that's the point at which I can start getting an income from YouTube for it. It's not going to make me rich. The research I've done uh, based on uh, 1000 subscribers and the watch hours I'm likely to have will give me about five pounds a month in total income from all the videos. So it's five pounds in total, which won't help a lot, but it will help to fund um, purchases for the channel and um, hopefully I'll be able to bring you a bit more content. So please stay subscribed and please continue to watch. We need a thousand subscribers and we need, um, in over a year, we need 4,000 watch hours. So if we go to the last year, we're up to nearly 2,000. So we get nearly 2,000 watch hours in the last year on the channel and we need uh, twice as many as that, but we need about three times as many subscribers. So I'll continue getting the content out as often as I can. And if you don't mind um, staying subscribed and watching the videos, then hopefully we can get to that magic milestone. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, because we've got a lot of comments, all these tabs up here are comments on, uh, of videos that people's commented on, which I wanna catch up on. And we might get through them all today, or I might uh, split it up into two sections. So I'm gonna go back to this one. Now this one is the, um, The, oh, that was the last channel update. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. Now, all the links to these videos will be down in the um, description. Uh, I'm going to be putting... That's another thing which I want to do as part of this channel update is um, we I normally put cards up the top of the video, um, but if you click on those, it takes you away from the video you're watching. So what I'm going to do from now on is go uh, down you can go down to the description which is underneath the video and I'll have all of the all of the links there so if there's another video I've referenced in one of my videos you'll be able to go to the description after that first video and then skip over to the next ones so let's go back we've got uh, four months ago I think I covered this from Leonard um, so Richard Willerton says, Thanks for your channel. Can I please ask, I have gone on the link uh, to set up Minidisc and loaded it to my laptop. I've downloaded drivers and managed to install and even got the software to recognize my Minidisc player linked by USB docking station. So it says, the problem is when I try and transfer any songs, it gives me an error report box with the words, unable to transfer the following tracks to my library because they're recorded recorded in NetMD on another computer. So let me just read that again. The problem is when I try and transfer any songs, it gives me the error. Uh, thank you from Richard. Okay, Richard, what I think is happening here is on the left pane of um, Sonic Stage, you get the you get your library. On the right pane, you get your mini discs. You know the songs that are on the mini disc. Now you cannot transfer the songs from the mini disc to your computer if those songs have been written to that mini disc using a different NetMD mini disc player. In other words, you can't get songs off a mini disc onto your computer. That's one of Sony's um, paranoid copy protection methods. Um, so otherwise, what we'd be doing is we'd be burning a CD to a mini disc. We'd be taking a mini disc player around to a friend's house and then putting all our CD tracks onto his um, computer. But frankly, that's ridiculous because we'd lend in the CD. But there we go. Sony has a history of being paranoid about copy protection. So my guess is that's the problem. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get the tracks off of the mini disc onto the PC and Sonic Stage will not let you do that. And I don't think there's any way to do that apart from um, just capturing the audio from a mini disc. 
Peter Olkin says, I like Tecmon too. Uh, hearing is less perfect with age, but the main point is the recording time. So I probably was mentioned about uh, I've been using this um, mini disc recorder um, and it's a pre NetMD one and I've been, just been using optical in on it. And I was worried because it's such an early recorder, I was worried that the um, sound quality wouldn't be as good as the later recorders. Uh, and Peter says, uh, I would use one of the net players as standard as the net feature is a midlife feature. Um, and what I have done recently is for a, for a very long 20 mini, 20 mini disc playlist, I've been using this, which is a Type R um, recorder, which is one of the later ones, using Optical In instead. And um, I've been putting it on LP2 to, to use fewer mini discs. Um, but this one works quite as, just as well as the other one, but I just like the other one. It's got a nice feel to it and a, ni a nice hefty weight. And finally, Peter says, uh, do you port recordings from your PC? If so, what software are you using? Okay, generally I will use Optical Out, but I have used Sonic Stage and I have used that alternative to Sonic Stage, which is Stefano Brilli, I think his name is. Let's have a look. So if you're interested in that, let me show you where to go. So I'm just pulling up this video on YouTube and down in the comments, so you scroll down or you tap, tap on, on that on, a, on mobile. And here we've got all of the chapters, so you can skip straight to it. There's the alternative to Sonic Stage there. Uh, it takes you straight to that part in the video, but there's actually a link there somewhere. There it is. So this is the web mini disc application. So you don't need Sonic Stage. What you should do is go to, the, to that link. So go to this video I'm talking about, which is my video, and then in the description, click the link to Stefano Brilli's, uh, the web mini disc application, and you can watch his video. I can't show too much because it might be copyrighted. Um, and then in his description, he's got a list, a link, should I say, to the development part where he's writing his code and also to the actual page that you can use to transfer stuff via USB from a web interface. So you drag your tracks into the web interface and then it transfers them to your mini disc player via USB. It does not work in Firefox, which is the browser I'm using, but it does work in Chrome and it does work in the new version of Edge, which is based on Chrome or the Chromium project. Um, so it works in both of those. But there's another comment about this from someone else. And he said, um, you have to jump through some hoops to install the drivers. And he said, it doesn't work if you've already installed the Sonic Stage drivers. So what you might have to do is if you're using the same computer as you've got Sonic Stage on, you might have to uninstall the Sonic Stage drivers and that will stop it from working with Sonic Stage. So hopefully you've got a spare computer to use that. That was a long answer, but thanks Peter. Oh, he's got another comment here. When so much portable electronics is from China, it makes old stereo stuff much more desirable. Also, the old stuff has features like forms of Dolby, etc. Uh, I prefer Panasonic and Sony for the build quality. Portable cassette players are gaining in price and popularity again. Well, I totally agree. There is something about handling a mini disc and handling a mini disc player. It's the it's the the physical um, you know hand, handling this the actual physical media that makes it so desirable. It's nowhere near as practical as streaming. Uh, but having said that, it's just nice, you know, they look nice uh, and they're nice to handle. And unfortunately, everyone's jumping on the bandwagon the same as I have, and they're buying up mini disc suppliers and cassettes and stuff like that. And the second hand ones are getting quite expensive now. Um, when I started, you can pick the average price as a bundle for, say, 20 mini discs was £20. And the average price as a bundle now is nearly £40 for used mini discs. And new ones, you know, slightly more unusual ones, uh, are costing £5 each plus postage. OK, another uh, comment from Peter. One oddity is I have a Ghetto Blaster with a mini disc built in by Iowa. I have been considering buying uh, either a Sony or there's a Casio mini disc um, boombox, which you can get as a second hand one on eBay. But 
uh, I don't really need it. I've got two hi-fi systems on my desk here and a load of mini discs to hand and a Walk Sony Walkman cassette player. I'd like all these things and I'd like to show them off to you, but uh, I haven't got the space to store them and I haven't got money to keep buying them at the moment. But I was, was a cheap, cheaper brand, um, but if it's still working, it's uh, as long as the speed, you know, the sound quality is good, then great. I like Panasonic. Um, I've got a Denon Hi-Fi system here and a Pioneer one, and I like this Panasonic player, very lightweight. Uh, okay, so moving on, uh, Jaden the Pro One Two Three. Now I know who this is. So hi, Jaden. Thanks for your comment. He says that uh, I visit your channel and it's cool. I know him personally. Uh, right. So Amoeba Virus. I believe the Type S. Oh, who mentioned Dolby? Someone mentioned Dolby. Peter mentioned Dolby earlier on. And Dolby was a feature of cassette players. Um, and I've got one here. But Dolby is not licensing that technology anymore. So Dolby was a noise reduction system, which would, uh, cassettes were really quite often prone to tape hiss, very high frequency tape hiss, which you can hear and Dolby was designed to uh, reduce that tape hiss, and it does really work quite well. But unfortunately, there's no point in putting it on a mini disc player um, because it was the tape itself that caused the hiss. It was the type of media it was recorded on. And of course, um, Sony's not interested in producing cassettes anymore, so they don't license the, the Dolby noise reduction. Uh, so where were we? Uh, oh, Amoeba Virus, he says, I use a Panasonic 5CD player and an MZ-910, which I don't have one of those, unfortunately, um, on LP4 with an optical cable. So this must be going back to the um, quality of the sound. I usually put four to five CDs in of the same artist and record to mini disc in real time. There is very little quality loss, if any, during playback. Oh, that's interesting. I've also done custom playlists and got up to 72 tracks on one standard 80 minute uh, mini disc. And I've got about 21 gigabyte mini discs, which I've yet to try, but should be the same as standard mini discs. Um, right, so yes, my playlist that I was doing, uh, my multi mini disc playlist, which is very long, I was getting about 33 to 38 tracks on LP2. So you've got the standard play, you've got LP2 which is double the length uh, on a single mini disc, and LP4 should be four times the length, so that corresponds to what you're saying. The one gigabyte mini discs don't work in a standard mini disc player, as Amoeba Virus probably knows. You need a, a high MD mini disc for that, and I think you can get many more tracks on that because um, it's, uh, it's got a better compression as well, and it's got much more storage. So I wouldn't mind picking up a high MD mini disc player, but again, I've got no actual, actual need for it. I've got probably about four mini disc players I use on a regular, regular basis. And he also says, don't buy an optical cable that's gold plated. Absolutely right. It just happened to be gold plated, the one I showed off. Um, and but it also shows a little bit of quality uh, or care in the production. If they're going to go to the effort of gold plating it, then the other components like the fiber optic uh, filaments are likely to be a better quality as well. It just happens to be gold plated and, and it won't, um, won't uh, tarnish over time as well. But it doesn't give you any better audio quality, I agree. And ET2 Carbon says, where was the topic of the title discussed? So the um, 40 minutes of video and uh, never discuss the point of the video. So ET2 Carbon, go back to the video. There'll be a link in the description of this video. And when you get to the video, which is this one here, scroll down, go to show more, and here are the chapters. So you can click on any of these chapters and it will take you to that part in the video. And the part you want is at 18 minutes and 13 seconds. You click on there, and that's where I talk about the alternative to Sonic Stage. So, thanks everyone for the comments on that video. Okay, moving on to the next video. This is the video for Sony Minidisc Player. Let's have a look. This is the one. 
Sony Mini's player MZN707 Refurb. So that wasn't working this one, so that's what these comments relate to. Um, in reverse order, so starting at the bottom. I do not know how to pronounce this, but I'm going to have a go. Vonus, 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 I really can't, sorry, <laughs> useless. Um, this is, that's a nice one. The MZ-N707 is my favorite player recorder because of the dedicated record button and the R-Type recorder. I do like it. Another reason I like it, I'll just unplug it here because it's plugged into a charger. The other reason I like it is it, it comes with this stand which does the charging and inside the back is a standard AA battery which I use, actually this is a really old battery uh, from Aldi, I think, or Lidl, and um, it's just easy to replace the battery. Now, I, I've got a recharge window at the moment because once I finish with this, I just pop it back in and it's always charged. I do have another one with a gumstick battery in it, which is this one here, but the gumstick battery doesn't last as long as um, this is a gumstick battery, doesn't last as long as a AA battery because these are. Not original ones, but it's um, a Vapex battery, a vaping battery, and I don't think they're really made to the same quality as originals. I do have a couple of originals, and you still get quite a good, um, a quite a good long life out of it. But yeah, I like this one. I do like this one. It's heavier than the other one and, and fatter than the other one, but it's dead easy because it's got a nice screen on it. It's dead easy to pick up out of the cradle. It's always fully charged that way. So thanks for that comment. Uh, Mackin Joss, he's commented before. He says, nice player. Prices of these are shooting up at the moment. You're lucky to, got, to get one when you did. Yeah, that, I mean, it'll be even worse now because this is four months ago. Actually, during the um, lockdown in the UK, prices of um, anything retro and audio related went up because everyone was at home and, you know, doing a lot of shopping on eBay. I've noticed they've come down a little bit since uh, the lockdown finished. So thanks for that comment, Mackin Josh. Uh, Hydro Mario, is that how you say that? Hopefully. Hello, I've got one of these, but I can't find the software to copy and paste files. Please help. Here we go. I will. Um, I will. What's the best way to do? Right. Have a look in the in the description of this video. I'm going to reply to all these comments anyway in text, so he will get the reply. But if you're watching this video. Hydro Mario and anyone else who's looking for that alternative to Sonic Stage, I'll put a link in the bottom of this video, in the description of this video, so you can go straight to um, the YouTube video for the for Stefano Brilli, and he'll take you through it there. So thanks for your comment. Uh, let's move on. So this one's about my. I'll put it over here. This one is the Sony Walkman uh, uh, WM EX610 cassette player, and that video. Let's have a look at that. <coughs> that was the unboxing I did when I bought it, and the testing, and it didn't work. It needed a new belt in the end. And uh, Bobby Krishnan, Bobby Bob Bob G Krishnan, how did you manage to find this in 2020? I have explained that you get them on eBay. A bit more expensive now. But a very nice player. You probably need to replace the belt, and we'll come on to that later on, I think. Um, and my girl says uh, he or she had this Walkman 25 years ago, and it comes with a separate battery attachment to the side of the Walkman, which is nice. But the thing is, that when I'm used to carrying a mini disc around, having a battery attachment on something this size would make it... It wouldn't fit in my pocket. This thing barely fits in my pocket as it is. But yeah, it did have a battery attachment. But again, this one uses the gumstick battery. There we go. There's an original Sony one there. So I've been using that. And I probably get uh, at least two or three sides of a cassette using this, even though the battery is probably about 20 years old by now. Or more. Most likely more. The battery possibly came in a uh, mini disc player. So it wasn't um, original to the uh, cassette player. So thanks for your comment on that one. Okay, so moving on to the next one, we're talking about the this video here, the Sony Minidisc MZ-N710, which is this one here, delivery and cleaning. Um, and the comments are, 
Uh, Jason Scott, oh, there's two from Jason. So he says, I've just purchased a new old stock one used today. Thanks for the review and the great channel. So thank you very much, it's very kind. Um, we'll come back to him in a minute. Jonathan uh, Cortico says, hello, I've got Sony Walkman from Japan surplus and it's not working. Can you give me some advice on how to fix it? Sorry for my bad English. Your English is fine. Okay, uh, we need some more information on this, Jonathan. So. What I would suggest is um, either reply, I'll reply to your message and hopefully you'll see that reply. You can write down what's wrong with the mini disc player. Or better still, if you've got access to a phone with a camera on it, shoot a video on your phone of what's wrong with the player and then upload that to YouTube and then send, give a reply to this video, um, to this original video, uh, and put the link in it for your video. And then I'll go off and have a look. I'm not really an expert on these, to be honest, but I'll see what I can do. And there's probably, and if I mention it in a future video of mine, there's probably someone who might be able to help you. But a little bit more information and we might be able to figure it out for you. So Jonathan Scott, again, uh, said he just bought one again. My unused one turned up broke, second time lucky. So again, Jason, it'd be nice to know what, whether it just failed to work or what the problem was. And uh, Amran Khan says, I've got myself a bargain. Yeah, I do like to look for a bar bargain for mini discs, but they're hard to find nowadays. So thanks for that comment. Let's move on to the next one. This one's my most watched video. This is crazy, this one. Let's have a look at the analytics. I don't know why this is the most watched video. It's had 9,300 views since it was published. And look, someone's even watching it now. Um, and I don't know why, uh, it was quite an early video, um, but I don't know why it's so popular. I, if anyone's got any idea, uh, then let me know. So let's go to the comments. Let's scroll down because we've probably got more, caught. here we go. So uh, this, this one is, uh, right, so trying to use, so, oh, Jess like biking, he's commented before, I might have covered this one before. Trying to you try using the remote and maybe the batteries aren't charged. Um, once you clean a battery terminal, try doing a solder bridge. I had to do that on one camera I bought. Yeah, I didn't need to do the solder bridge, but I did get this one working. It was just the cleaning. I just needed to clean it. And there was another video for this, which you probably replied to as well. And El Barto Perez says, I have a mini disc that I can sell you. Are you interested? Sony MZ RH1. It works 100%, only I live in Mexico. Well, uh, Mr. Perez, I am not interested uh, because I only buy my um, mini discs from eBay uh, or a local shop if I can find any mini discs or players in a local shop. And the reason for that is. Um, if it turns up broken, then eBay will support me and get my money back. And there's no way I'd be buying it directly from anyone in the UK if I couldn't actually see it first. And it would be even more difficult to solve a problem with someone who's living in Mexico or anywhere else in the world. So thanks for the offer. But what I can suggest to you, if you wanted to sell it, they fetch quite high prices. If you've got access to eBay in Mexico, I don't really know. Um, sell it on eBay. You should get a good, uh, good price for that. But thanks for the offer, but I'll only buy from UK people and I'll only buy from eBay. Thanks very much. And Just Like Biking again says, I saw and bought my first mini disc from Goodwill five years ago and I've bought several more from eBay. I love them more than my CDs and cassettes because of the sound quality and size. I agree. I listen to the cassettes because I like the nostalgia factor. Um, I've got one with Dire Straits on it and I've recorded it on, uh, I think on my Pioneer system with Dolby and the sound quality is fantastic uh, on my, um, M, uh, on this mini disc, uh, oh, sorry, on this cassette player that I showed you before. It is fantastic, but it's not as good as a mini disc. Now I've listened to um, some streaming music on high quality and then recorded from that streaming service onto a mini disc and oddly, recorded via optical, oddly the, um, the quality on the mini disc sounds better even though it's the same source. So 
Um, I think I think what it boils down to is it's the separation on the stereo. The stereo separation is better, and you can hear things. Um, it might be the way it's encoded. You can hear things on mini discs that you can't hear things can't hear through high quality streaming. So I'm not an audio engineer. I don't really know much about that sort of stuff. But I agree, the quality is excellent, and the size is great as well. But it frankly is not as convenient as listening on a mobile phone via streaming or on a computer via streaming. So thanks again for those comments. Another break to let my phone call down. So this one is the uh, Prime Media video um, where I bought these, um, you can see from there, I bought these Prime Media and I, I, I thought they weren't very high quality and before I bought them and when I bought them they were covered in sticky stuff. So uh, I commented on that on that video and uh, Alex Root has said, uh, Hi, I lived in Japan 12 years from 2002 to 2014 and I was in love with the mini disc tech. Uh, I still have 10 of them, uh, 80 minute prime mini disc, five used and five new. Indeed, they were low end market. Since I pur purchased them all in once for 500 yen, back in 2005 and I think 500 yen now is about um, I'm guessing it's about seven pounds or something like that um, I suspect it might even be less than that I suspect they're rebranded Maxells uh, I'll give a check later on because they still work like a charm um, they do work like a charm I haven't had any problems with them so that's one of the prime media ones we're talking about and the sticky stuff did all clean up with um, uh, with some Mr Sheen and a cloth. Although that one there feels a bit sticky. Oh no, it's just the matte part on there. Now the thing about a mini disc is it's a digital recording, and it's either recorded or it's not recorded. So you won't get any sound or hiss unless that was present on the source. Um, so one mini disc doesn't matter how much you pay for your mini for your mini disc. It's going to sound as good whether it's cheap or expensive, but over the years the they might degrade. Now there was something called um, um, bit rot, I think, on CDs, where CDs would rot over years. So if you've if you've done any backups of family photos or anything to a CD many years ago, you need to get them back off of that CD and back them up somewhere else because those CDs do degrade. But I don't think that is the same with mini discs. So anyway, nice. I quite like those mini discs, even if they are cheaper ones. Let me just put that back in my in my tower there. Right there we go. Uh, and Amoeba Virus again says trays in toothpaste for polishing minor scratches in plastics. It's very good on CDs too. Yeah, that's an excellent suggestion. Thanks. It does toothpaste does work. Not the gel stuff, but the the stuff that is white and has like a gritty texture when you use it on your teeth because that grit is the abrasive part and it's gentle enough to um, remove minor scratches. Uh, Tecmoan uh, has also used uh, Brasso, which is a brand name of a metal cleaner. And he used the Brasso wadding, which is like cotton wool coated in Brasso, comes in a tin. I've got some Brasso liquid in a tin and I can use that as well if I want to clean up scratches. I haven't tried it, but I would imagine it would do the same job. But it does stink. The stuff you get in liquid form does stink, and I suspect it's got some chemicals in there. So you, just for the awful smell, you want to open a window. But to protect yourself against chemicals, you want to open a window as well. You wouldn't get that problem with toothpaste, obviously. So thanks for that suggestion, Amoeba Virus. So let's move on. So this was um, unwrapping uh, 74 minutes and what was it? Let's have a look. This is where I compared um, Maxell mini discs, the XL274 uh, version, and the 80-minute uh, version, the 80-minute Pro. I compared the two to see what the differences was, were. And uh, Jason Scott says, great channel. I just hooked up my Sony JB930 after 10 years, uh, 10 years in the closet, and put, <laughs> put in an offer for an unused MZ uh, N710, oh right, that's a really nice player, that's the one I showed you earlier on. Hope you got that, so that was excellent. What's the Sony JB930? Let's have a look. Ooh, that's very nice. I haven't got the space for one of these, 
and it's a good job too because I think I could get carried away and end up with a massive wall full of um, shelf uh, through rack uh, hi-fi units so is that it there I wonder if they did it in silver yeah they did it in silver mm, very nice I like that won't fit in my pocket though so well good luck with that I'm glad you've uh, glad you're giving the MZ uh, the mini discs a go again uh, Alex Root, I guess the non-pro version could be a second grade disc. I mean, it could possibly be an 80 minute disc in the first instance, but that didn't pass a full quality control test on the edges of the disc. So they might cut it off and label it as uh, 74 minute. I repeat, only my guess. Now, you could be right there. Um, I don't know. I've never heard of that before, but I know that you do that with... Um, uh, RAM chips, you know, if you want to upgrade your RAM, and with um, spinning hard disks for your computer and your laptop, what they do is they do a quality control check, and say it's a one terabyte hard disk, if they find there's some surface defects on the quality control check, then uh, they mark though, they reduce the usable size of the disk, and then sell the disk maybe as a 500 gigabyte one, half the size. So it contains the same stuff inside, but if their surface quality is not good enough, then uh, they will just tell the disk it can't use that part of its surface and then sell them on as cheaper disks. I says, I've heard that happens on, on computer disks, uh, but I've never had that corroborated. Um, and likewise, I think they do it on RAM. So cheap RAM, if it's say a 16 gigabyte um, stick of RAM and some of the RAM banks are, are bad they might sell that on as 8 gigabyte and I can't really see why that wouldn't work the thing is it's trying to cram so much density of the data into the storage medium that um, it's quite expensive and it's prone to errors so if part of it doesn't work just blank it off and sell it as a uh, you know the rest of the chips on that RAM are okay and the rest of the surface on the disk is okay it's just a, a localised error so you could be right there um, although it wouldn't have to have much of an error on it to bring it down from 80 to below the 74 minute. So I don't really know. If anybody knows more information on that, please let us know. So thanks, Alex, Alex Root. So pressing on before my phone melts. This one is the Sony uh, Walkman belt replacement for this Sony Walkman. Okay, so John White says, can this Walkman rewind forward and backwards without a cassette placed in? And no, it can't. I did test this the first time I tried to shoot this video. Without a cassette placed in it, nothing at all. And with a cassette placed in it, it will rewind quite happily. So I thought there may be a sensor in the cassette that was responsible for monitoring, sorry, in the player. And I thought it might be these two, but what these two are, these two little sensors, move down and out of the way. One of them detects whether it's got the right protect notch removed and the other one detects whether it's a chrome tape. And I can't see any other sensors in this cassette player which would sense whether there is a tape in there. But for sure, it doesn't even try to record without a tape inside. So if you've got one that's broken, you're gonna have to put a tape in it to find out whether it's working or not. Okay, so moving on to Chilogurti maybe that's how you say it very informative would this be the same as for a WMEX uh, 560 now, I did look this up before and I can't remember so let's do a let's do a YouTube search a uh, Google search for that and have a look oh yeah now I remember this so um, let's look at an image it's going to be similar but it's going to be a different belt my guess so the answer to the question is no it's it's going to be similar it's going to be similar because it's the same range of models i think but um i would follow the i would look on youtube see if anyone's replaced a belt for your, that particular model and if not re-watch this one and get an idea of what uh where the screws are for it and hopefully it won't be too different but you probably need a different size belt so thanks for the comments on that one Okay, let's move on. Now, this is my cleaning video for um, uh, how to move, remove battery corrosion from anything in general, basically. Not just a Walkman, but anything that requires a battery that's been left in and corroded. And uh, Jamie Costa says, 
I recently found a new sealed mini disc in a box. Right. Um, um, I think he means, or she means, um, is that Jamie? That would be a boy, wouldn't it? By the looks of it. Um, uh, I think they mean a uh, mini disc player. So we'll come back onto that because I think that mini disc player might not have worked. But if it did work, you're very lucky to find one. Okay, so moving on uh, to this cassette video, uh, the com I'll read the top comment first. Great channel, I like it very much. Well, thank you, uh, Peter Savchenko, is that how you say it? Uh, it's really nice, so I love comments like that. I mean, who doesn't, who couldn't like that? And Net says, I'd be pretty interested in seeing Sony's CD-IX cassettes compared with the CD-IT, which is one of the ones, the blue one I showed you earlier on, that's actually CD-IT2, uh, very nice cassettes. Well, I've had a look on um, a Cassette Comebacks um, page, and uh, that cassette, and now bear in mind, I'm not an expert on this, that's a, a good looking case, but I don't know what the cassette looks like. Now, in terms of comparing it, all I can compare is what it looks like, because frankly, I don't have any really high-end audio stuff, and I don't really have high-end hearing either, so I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between um, a, a good chrome cassette and a really good chrome cassette. They probably both sound the same to me. I could probably tell the difference between a really bad cheap cassette and a good chrome cassette, but um, I've got more cassettes than I'll ever be able to use now. I've probably got a supply of about um, 20 unopened cassettes, whereas about a year ago I didn't have any. Uh, there'll be another video coming up about uh, more cassettes that I've bought, so stay tuned for that. But if I, I suppose if I can get some um, donation, when when the channel reaches a thousand subscribers and I can start getting a small amount of income, uh, as I said earlier, about five pounds per month, I think it will be, then I'll be able to just buy these bits and pieces uh, and then maybe sell them on. But selling on goods on eBay, you take about a 17% hit in commissions and you've got to pay for the postage and you've got to take it down for for posting and unless you're doing a lot of eBay business you're not going to make money on on this sort of stuff so and I don't have the space to store it but if I'm getting lots of um, uh, commission then certainly you know it's worth me doing lots of commission if I'm getting lots of uh, income from YouTube but that won't be for many years and I doubt it'll ever happen on something as niche as this uh, but if anybody wanted a, a drop a few pounds, couple of pounds um, in a do as a donation to the channel to help me fund something like this, then of course I'm not going to turn that down. It just means I can buy more stuff and show more stuff on the channel. And there's uh, there will be a link to that in the description box. So I'd be interested in seeing it as well, Nets, but I've got no need for any more cassettes at the moment. So probably I won't end up doing that. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's move on. And if you do want cassettes, uh, pop over to Cassette Comeback. Um, nice guy, great YouTuber. Uh, support his business as well. Okay, so this one is the Sony Mini Disc Recorder. And I can't even remember which one it was. So let's have a look. It is the, oh, the NZ, uh, N, sorry, the MZ N710, this one here. Um, let's have a look at the comment. Oh, it's in Spanish. Um, Como puedo comprar un mini disc Sony MZ-N710? I did look this up because I don't speak Spanish and I got it from eBay. Do you have eBay in Spain? I've no idea. I would imagine you do. eBay Spain? It'd probably be eBay.es, wouldn't it? Let's have a look. There we go. That's where you go. Uh, no point in translating that to Spanish, is there? Because it would be, probably be the same. So, Carlos, pop over to eBay, and that's probably where you can get them. So, thanks very much for the comment. Uh, moving on, this is the uh, Panasonic, which, if you watch that video, it's I, I was I got carried away because the thing is so beautiful. <laughs> it's such a small, beautiful, small device. Uh, so, the comment I haven't responded to, um, well, Cassette ND, he's probably got a channel. Let's have a look. How many videos? Oh, only one. Okay, that's a shame. Uh, right, so um, he says, really nice addition to your collection. It is, it is a wonderful player and it's, it works great. The only problem I've got with it, if I just plug a headphones into it, 
um, there's a loose connection. But if I use the uh, inline remote, I don't have that problem. And Amoeba Virus again says, I got one of these about 10 years ago. Nice, very nice compact design from Panasonic. I've not seen many since. The problem is they do scratch up quite easily and the speakers get dented quite easily. So when you go off to eBay to try and get one, it's very hard to find one in good condition and they're going for quite a bit of money now as well. So thanks for that uh, extra comment, Amoeba Virus. Okay, oh, coming back, I think we've answered this one. Yep, we've answered that one. Ah, this is my Denon um, Hi-Fi separate system, it's a shelf system, whatever they call it. I nearly bought this unit, but preferred the look of the Denon uh, uh, DMD M31 units. And I've already looked this up, and I do prefer those too. But this is the one I've bought. So that's the, that I really like that. That is really nice, but I think they're quite expensive. So I bought this one here. And I've bought a few of these. I, bought one and none of the multiplay CDs work on them. There's a three, three CD changer in it. None of them work. I bought one um, from eBay, but I collected it locally. It had been dropped, but I wanted it for spare parts. I think I wanted it for the cassette player. I'm not sure. And I also bought another one because it said on eBay that it had been, that it was working, it was just skipping. And I thought maybe I can clean the head, uh, the um, laser on it and it would work. But unfortunately it was so badly packed that it came all dented. And then when I plugged it in to try it, it wouldn't read the CDs either. So now I think I've got two or three, I think I've got three multi-change CDs for this unit. And um, none of them work. So what I'm planning to do, one of the ones that's all dented up and smashed to pieces, I'm going to, um, take the cover off and I'm going to turn up the laser power potentiometer because um, it could be that the laser is failing and you can turn up the power going into the laser but it quite often burns out the laser itself but if you turn it up just a little bit you might get it to work and I'm not that bothered because my Pioneer um, Hi-Fi unit uh, the CD player still works on that so if I want to record from CD to mini disc directly, then I can just use that. Um, but it would be nice to get the multi-changer working, but if it works, I will probably let you know. So thanks for that comment as well. Okay, uh, penultimate comments here. So Hiro, Hiro Gary Music uh, says, this is great, I bought an MZR55 and it's crazy weird with the controls, it seems to be the same thing. I was just going to clean the contacts and pray, but I will also check out the ribbon cable. And this relates to this mini display here, which worked when I first bought it. But then when I would press one of these buttons down here, it would uh, give me weird results. So I might press the play button and it would skip forward a track, or I might press pause and it would go to menu. And what I did was I took it to pieces to clean the contacts. And then re these are the contacts on it here. But then realized that they were too far apart for it to be you know, a problem with dirty contacts here. So what I did was I, I then realized that it was probably from this controller board to the main circuit board, it was probably the ribbon cable. Because sometimes you get that with keyboards in laptops where the ribbon cable is a little bit dirty and you can just take it apart and clean it and put it back in again and your keyboard works properly. So I did that and I put it all together and it did actually work for a time and then it started exhibiting the same problem again. So recently I got it out to test it before shooting this video for the first time. And unfortunately, if I was to press the, uh, I think it was a uh, forward skip button, it would put a track mark in instead. So it clearly needs to be uh, done again. So let us know, Hiro Gary Music, if you did that repair and if it's still working. Uh, or if anyone else has done a repair like that and it's still working or it's failed, please let us know. Because um, and uh, until we get an answer to that, I would avoid buying one of those uh, MZ-N505 mini disc players. Because if they can't be repaired, you might find it's working and it stops working after that. Brilliant. And the final comment is on one of my most recent uh, videos, a cassette one, where I compared those two... Um, uh, probably when I uh, this is the unwrapping. So this was the unwrapping video for the uh, for this cassette. 
And uh, Leonard says this uh, blue one looks nice, and it does indeed. And I've been using it. Um, so if you've got an idea on how to label these things up, I'm using these Letra, uh, what do they call them? Letra set, Letra tag. Um, uh, label maker ones, which I don't really like, but it's the best I've found at the moment. I don't like the original labels. I don't like labels on them at all, but I can't keep track of what's on which mini disc or cassette other than that. Okay, so one final reminder. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe because I really want to get up to this 1,000 subscriber mark. And, and then eBay, not eBay, uh, YouTube, will start sending me an estimated five pounds a month uh, for all my videos that uh, get watched and it will help put some money in the kitty to buy more stuff and make more videos uh, so once again thanks very much for um uh for watching and subscribing um you can also make a direct con donation towards the channel uh that's there's always a donation link in the um in the description box so if you fancy doing that then that's great. I'll put it towards buying more stuff for the channel. So thanks for putting up with another long video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye.